The food and drink of a people reveals much about their past and history, such is the case with Puerto Rican food. Just like the makeup of its people, the Puerto Rican diet is mainly a combination of food known to the Taino, food that arrived on the island due to Spanish conquest and other European influences, and food that arrived as a result of the transatlantic slave trade and the desire for survival of the Africans who came as slaves. And you could also add American influences to that list. From the Taino and Ararat people came viandas such as yame, yautia, yuca, batata, and malanga, which are all locally grown in the mountain regions of the island. The Taino were also known for making cassabe, a starchy flatbread made from yuca flour. The Taino also grew maize, some beans, peppers, sweet and spicy chili, and culantro, which are essential in sofritos today. And of course, the native inhabitants of the island were enjoying tropical fruits such as pineapples, quenepas, guava, and papaya, which all grew and continue to grow in abundance on the island. From the Spanish and European came the pork or lechon, beef, rice, oils, and various spices such as oregano, cumin, basil, and basically most of the ingredients necessary to make sofrito, which is a key component of Puerto Rican food today. The Spanish also brought ajo con leche or rice and milk and popular desserts such as flan that are hugely popular today. From the enslaved Africans came the famous plantain, banana, yam, okra, and some beans. The gandule also came from Africa. Even coffee and coconuts found their way more or less through the African continent. African slaves also introduced the deep frying of foods. And we can't forget el bacalao, or salted codfish, which is closely tied to Puerto Rico's slave military and religious history. The salt curing allowed longevity for the fish. The Spaniards fed it to soldiers and slaves due to its nutritional value. It allowed them to sustain a long working day. It was also eaten by the Spaniards themselves on Christian holy days. The most recent addition to the Puerto Rican diet has occurred through American influence. This began with the introduction of preserved meats to the island such as Spam, corned beef, and Vienna sausages. These foods became popular due to the convenience of being easy to prepare and transport. For many Puerto Ricans, these foods were important during times of hurricanes. Over time, all these foods were combined and form a unique Puerto Rican cuisine that includes ajos con habichuelas, or rice and beans, ajos con gandules, or rice and peas, sancocho, which is a Puerto Rican stew made mainly with viandas and meats, rice and sweets, or ajo con dulce, coquito, which is like a Puerto Rican eggnog that includes rum, sofrito, which is an herbal sauce made of fresh onions, peppers, garlic, cilantro, etc. Sofrito is actually the main herbal spice used to cook most Puerto Rican foods. We also have bacalaitos, which is a fried flour patty made with codfish. We have pateles, which is made with pork or chicken and adobo, encased in a green plantain masa, and then wrapped in banana leaves. And of course, let's not forget the famous Puerto Rican hot sauce or pique that is often homemade by pimenton, a variety of chili peppers, garlics, and spices. I'm sure I missed some dishes, but you get the point. Much of what we eat, like vianda, sofritos, and coconuts, is healthy and contributes to the well-being of our health. However, other parts of the Puerto Rican cuisine are not so friendly to our health in the long term. As the Puerto Rican diet continues to evolve, it's important to separate the healthy foods from the not-so-healthy foods if we are to improve and grow as a people. After all, you are what you eat. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.